Hey, it's Joel. I'm at UC Berkeley with my friend Joe. Hey, dude. Hey. Look at that blue, like, lab coat. It's so beautiful. And I was promised here that I was going to see things that were going to blow my mind. And producer David said, you know, we've talked to Maple Glass. They're an Australian company that extrude glass as a filament, and you get 3D printed glass. And he was like, just wait till you see this. So, Joe, show me something that's going to blow my mind. So in this, in this method, we actually use a formulation of silica glass nanoparticles. These are... Nanoparticles. These are particles that are 40 nanometers in diameter. How thick is a human hair? A human hair is about 100 uh, microns, micrometers. So this is a Infinitely thousand times small. smaller than that. <laughs> okay. Wow, that is tiny. You done been shrunk. We fill this resin with these these silica nanoparticles, and we do the normal CAL printing process. CAL being computed axial lithography, the volumetric 3D printing. With the printing, we are actually binding together these, these silica nanoparticles. So the polymer, once it's cross-linked, holds these particles together in a what we call a green part, which okay. consists of the polymer and the silica. Typical processes, a green part is something that then has to be debinded and sintered. Exactly. Right? Oh, yeah. so here too. Yeah, so the next, next step of the process is to put it in a debinding oven, which goes up to about 1100 Celsius. We burn out the polymer, so then we're only left with just a very loosely held together structure of silica nanoparticles. How loosely is it? It's very fragile, so it's like if you touch it, it, will, it can break apart okay. and you lose your structure. And then the next step after that is to center it. So then we go up a little higher temperature and we're actually almost melting the silica and it's, it's fusing almost. together. Mm -hmm. So at a molecular level, then the silica is fused? It's softening and it fuses together the particles into a continuous structure of silica. And how big are these structures that you're making? Right now we've, we've been able to print structures on the order of a few millimeters. <laughs> uh, minimum feature sizes around 50 micrometers, so that's about half the <laughs> thickness of a human hair. This is insane. This is glass. Yeah. But, but at, a, at a scale that I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a chunk of glass. Like you said, microfluidity. We can actually perfuse, perfuse liquid through these, these channels. These channels are about a uh, minimum size of 150 micrometers. How is this possible? Because when I've seen this CAL process, computed axial lithography, it's not as precise as this. Like this, mm -hmm. this is a level of precision that I have yet to really experience or be told how it works. Like mm -hmm. how, how do you get it this small but this precise? Yeah, for these prints we had to construct a different, uh, a different system that we called micro CAL. It had more magnification, so the, the system is, is magnified or, or projects a very small image into the material. In this way, we can, okay. we can write very small feature sizes. Okay, so the, the standard CAL process is projecting an image into a material and the stuff mm -hmm. I've seen where it rotates, but you're, you're magnifying yeah. it or more, you're, I guess, is, are you lensing it down or are right. you? Right, oh. yeah, we're focusing, focusing okay. the image to a much smaller area, so it's the, the image on the larger CAL setup, maybe a few inches or 50 millimeter yeah. size. In this case, it's down about maybe five millimeter, the whole image. Oh, so you, what you can do, you can create an object at a larger size, just knowing the rate at which it's going to be smaller because of this focus. Mm -hmm. So you know that cr something created at 10 millimeters in length is going to be at a certain size lower. The image is demagnified or, or shrunken down to a size of about five millimeters from the DMD chip, which is what creates the image. Mm -hmm. That's around 20 millimeters, so there's, there's about four times uh, okay. demagnification. I see a lot more samples here, and there's a lot more geometries other than just the two tiny things that I saw. So there's, there's purpose behind what you're doing, obviously, but what is that purpose? Where do you see this going? Where, are, there, are there micro glass structures needed in certain industries? One use case is for microfluidic structures which are used to uh, synthesize new materials in a way that's it's sometimes called continuous flow synthesis. Okay. In this application you need sometimes high temperature liquids or corrosive 
corrosive liquids or acids or something. And if you print plastic or polymer microfluidic devices, these can degrade with these liquids. But oh. oh, that's right, because you can keep acids in glass and it doesn't react. Right, silica is very chemically stable and uh, also even high, when, high temperature resistance. Even when shrunken down. Can these micro glass structures then, are they temperature stable as well? So they can withstand temperatures up to their melting point, which is around, I think, 1200 or something yeah. C. I, like, I can't, it just, it blows my mind that we've, Got these, these, like these are small. Joe, these are tiny, tiny glass structures, but mm -hmm. they're functional, like you said, microfluidic. Obviously, we have glass for lenses. Like, are, is there mm -hmm. a need for micro lenses or those sort of structures that you could make with this? Yeah, uh, great point. We have also printed a lot of uh, micro lens arrays, also. <laughs> Um, That's right, not just lenses, but arrays of them because you yeah. can. The cal process is also very nice because it's, it's layerless and that means you don't have the layer artifacts on uh, smooth surfaces like you do in other printing processes. So oh. that leads oh. to very exceptionally smooth surfaces, in, in this case down less than 10 nanometer roughness. Which is what you need for lenses and mm -hmm. for microfluidic devices. You, need, you, don't, you don't want the, the turbulence that's generated by any sort of layer lines or anything like that in those devices, or lenses. I mean, you'd have to, yeah, you you'd don't, have to grind these out. And you how don't do you have grind? to do any polishing processes after, <laughs> yeah. So this, this gives very yeah. smooth, smooth surfaces, and you can even do, since it doesn't require support material, like layer-based processing, you can, you can do multi-element structures with multiple lenses or... This is incredible. I have never seen anything like this. Joe, what is something that you printed with, with this process, with this microcal and this the glass, where you got it done and you looked at it and you're like, I can't believe I made that. Like, what, what, what made you question your sanity? Yeah, I think that would definitely be the microfluidic structures, which were... That one over there? Mm -hmm, yeah. Which were very, very challenging to both print and develop afterwards. I mean, we're going to yeah. do our best with cameras we have to be able to show the audience how just incredibly detailed these are. I <laughs> you have to, at that point, use like a scanning electron microscope to get, yep. to, to get that detailed resolution. And, and just, I mean, in your own words, how do they look? They look fantastic because the, <laughs> the smoothness of the surfaces are great. And I know, so the, the machine that made these has seen some upgrades and has been taken apart and changed a bit. It's so unassuming that something so mind-blowing was just made right there on a lab bench. That was my most successful project so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, people out there are going to be really interested in this, in this. And honestly, like, I'm super interested as well. So look right mm -hmm. there and just tell them where they can go to find out more. Yeah, so for this glass printing work, we published a, a journal paper in the journal called Science. Okay, well, if so, we'll find it. We'll put a link down below. Joe, this has been a treat. Honestly, like, one of the highlights of my day. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I hope this was a highlight of your day as well. And I hope you made it this far, because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to tell each other more. Fight for cause you believe in and microfluidic all the things. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. And as always, high five. You want one? Oh, crisp. Always. <laughs> So good!